All right, folks, All-Star Weekend is... Okay, it's still the weekend, so it's not over yet, but all the things that we have been paying attention to are now complete. The All-Star Games and competitions have wrapped up. Big shout-out over to Team Matthews and Justin Bieber for taking the dub. Matthews got the All-Star MVP award, which is great to see in his hometown Maple Leafs garden. But when it comes to other things that I wanted to talk about, this video has been put onto the back burner for way too long, and I need to go out there and talk about this or else I'm going to explode. Let's talk about the newest Vancouver Canuck, Elias Lindholm, or is it Elias Lindholm? It's Elias, excuse me. Elias is for Pedersen. Yeah, they're different, right. Elias Lindholm is a Vancouver Canuck, and I wanted to get into the debate that people have been bringing up as to whether or not Lindholm is going to re-sign with Vancouver, and whether or not that means anything. Because, I think it's common knowledge at this point, but Elias Lindholm is an expiring contract. He's making $4.85 million a year till the end of this season, and as a guy who is 29 years old, you could very well debate that he may be in a price tag range that sees him not being able to re-sign with Vancouver. Right now, he is at his point production pace of about 53 points on the season. That is, of course, with a bad Calgary Flames team where everybody's kind of been struggling throughout parts of the year. At his peak, Lindholm playing with Gaudreau and Kachuk, centering that line, posted up a point per game year, 82 points in 82 games, 42 goals and 40 assists in 2021-2022. Lindholm, at this time frame, was very good, and you could see that the contract he was on, 4.85 mil, was a huge steal. So, heading into this year's free agency period, you could very well debate that if there's a time for Lindholm to get his money, get his bag, get his dues, it is now. But, unfortunately, it's coming in the midst of a year where he is admittedly on the decline statistically. Maybe it's by no fault of his own, maybe it's because of just the team he is on. You could debate that within yourselves in the comments section below. But, long story short, there has been this idea that's floated around debating whether or not Elias Lindholm could get something in the $7-$8 million AAV range should he become a free agent and enter the open market in July. He's a versatile two-way center, he can play on the wing, he can win face-offs on the penalty kill, he is a right-handed guy, which actually does help in negotiations, and he's pretty skilled, pretty nifty, and he can score goals. He's a pretty good player, all things considered, and when you take a look at other contracts handed around the NHL, hey, guess what? Pierre-Luc Dubois just got handed out an $8.5 million deal. It's very well within the realm of possibility that a guy like Lindholm gets something in a similar, if not lower, kind of range. So, if the Vancouver Canucks are the team now, which will house Lindholm till the end of the season, is there a chance they re-sign him? Well, let's get into some of the arguments and some of the other things that we could talk about as well. This is an opening idea that I wanted to bring up to start everything off, because after Lindholm got traded, you had yourselves the interviews done where he actually talks about the idea of him signing a contract extension in Calgary. He said, I was always willing to stay in Calgary. And you then look at some of the Flames fans responding to this idea. I don't think the Flames were really into the idea of signing another big dollar long-term contract for an underperforming aging veteran. Wish him the best in Vancouver and wherever else he ends up. Of course, underperforming aging veteran, they're talking about Jonathan Huberdeau. Another comment says, GM Conroy ain't taking any chances after Johnny Gaudreau, buddy. No contract signed by the deadline and we're not winning crap right now. So you're gone, especially for that haul. So it's apparent for a lot of Flames fans that they're kind of okay with the idea of not extending Lindholm considering the status of their team and their experience with signing older, aging guys who have been underperforming already in the past few years. Now, when you go over to the Vancouver point of view, I wanted to open this conversation up with a post made by Elias Lindholm's wife on Instagram. She posted a Q&A the other day, and the story, which was screenshotted and posted onto the Arcanox sub, goes out there and translates the Swedish text. Lindholm's wife said this a few days ago, so many questions about the trade, and how it is with moving, etc, etc. Yeah, I'll answer it as soon as we solve everything, but yeah, it's a lot to deal with at once. Now that Elias has been traded, we've been getting a lot of accommodations. You can get an incredible amount of help from this team. And we'll be renting a furnished home to begin with until we know if we're just here for the season or if we'll stay here for several years. So, good to see that the 
NHL club is going out there and providing accommodation for the team. This is not new. Like, we have seen that there is, like, a few suites right by Rogers Arena where players that are call-ups or players that are only here for a short amount of time end up staying. I remember it was a really big deal with Utica because Utica, of course, is not here. It's on the other side of the continent. So when a guy would get called up from the Utica Comets, of course, he doesn't have a house in Vancouver. He would need to stay in one of those suites near the arena. And for Elias Lindholm, it's apparent that maybe a similar type of thing is being done here because they don't know if they're going to be sticking around long term. Good on his wife for being open and honest about it, but... This kind of indicates to us that, yeah, there is an idea that exists within the minds of the Lindholms that they can resign. We'll see, but it is possible. Heading over to this comment section, here's what a top one says. As great as it would be if Lindholm signed here long term, I just can't see it as a number that both sides would be happy with. This may be Lindholm's last chance to get a big payday, and I completely understand if he goes for that. It's just not something that would really work here. And so if you talk about the idea of him not signing, let's say he gets traded from Vancouver for that big package, including Kuzmenko, including a first round pick in the prospects. If Elias Lindholm does not re-sign, Honestly, I'm kind of okay with it. I'm okay with the trade that sent him over. I don't think this was one of those things where a lot of other Canucks fans are scared and they say, yeah, this is only a good trade if they re-sign him. You don't want to lose out on Kuzmenko, Burstevich, Yermo, a fourth and a first for nothing. And I disagree with that notion. Because if you think about where the Canucks are right now, they are literally the best team in the NHL. They had the most all-stars, most players at the top of the league in scoring, the best defenseman in points, one of the best goal scorers overall this year, multiple of the best assist guys this year, one of the best goaltenders in the NHL. They are literally one of the best teams, if not the best team in the league. If there's not a time for them to go out there and start trying to make a playoff run, is it not now? Way too many people I saw were freaking out about Kuzmenko and that draft pick. Hey, guess what? I love Kuzmenko too, but the guy has not been good this year. Lindholm, despite the fact that he's been struggling too, is a significant upgrade. He does more than what Kuzmenko can accomplish for this team in the short term. Everything the Canucks were looking for out of a piece to add to this top six, Lindholm can do. Win face-offs, penalty kill, back check, two-way defensive play, right-handed shot, and he can score goals when he's playing with great players. Not to say that Andre Kuzmenko isn't doing a lot of that, which, I mean, he's not really the best defensive-minded guy. He doesn't take draws, he doesn't play on the PK. The fact is, Andre Kuzmenko and his last year value, it was great, yes, but this year, in a season where the Vancouver Canucks are already the best team in the NHL, he was just not getting it done. And heading into a postseason run for this year, which is what they're doing, this year, this year, this year, Lindholm's a significant upgrade. And if you wanted to talk about first round picks, hey, guess what? The draft drops off after around the 15 to 20 mark anyway. This pick the Canucks have is probably going to be in the 25 plus range. And if best case scenario, you get yourselves a good player at 28 overall or whatever, that guy's not helping out the Vancouver Canucks until 2027, 2028. He's not becoming a main key contributor piece until then. The fact that the Vancouver Canucks traded away what was going to be a 2026-2027 asset, and they didn't trade away any of their best prospects that are closest to making the team right now, is a win. Hunter Brustevich, for all the good that he was, I said that it was going to sting seeing him get traded. But, come on, he's like the fourth best prospect on the team when he got traded. Velander, Pedersen, you can debate like Arshdeep Baines, Atu Ratu, all quote-unquote more valuable prospects. Hunter Brustevich just happened to have a strangely good year in the OHL, which I'll admit has been phenomenal, but the Canucks sold high on a guy that was literally just a third-round pick last year, and they used that value to get themselves an opportunity at an absolutely diabolical top six. So what I'm essentially saying is, Elias Lindholm fits so many of the needs the Vancouver Canucks have right now, and I think the assets the Canucks gave up to get him were not really the most important things in the world, that if they do end up letting him walk, that's fine. For better or for worse, no matter what happens in the playoffs, the fact that the Canucks were willing to go out there and reward this team for getting as good of a result this year as they have been with this trade, I think that's admirable. If Lindholm requests too much money and you let him walk, hey, if you made the third round or the Stanley Cup Finals, that's fine. 
It'll be heartbreaking, but it'll be fine. And if they win the gosh darn thing, then that doesn't even matter anymore. Does not matter what happens for the next 15 years if the Vancouver Canucks win a Stanley Cup in 2024. All this debate about, oh, they gave up another first round pick. They traded away Kuzmenko. What are they doing? You're living in the past. Kuzmenko last year was fantastic. This year, he hasn't been it. The Vancouver Canucks in prior years, they've been bad. They needed those first round picks this year, though. Nobody cares about the draft in Vancouver. Everybody's talking about the team now. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as to whether or not you agree with my assessment on the Elias Lindholm re-signing situation, if it actually does matter, or if having him as a pure rental is just fine. I think it is, but let me know your thoughts in the comments as to whether or not you agree. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.